Questions number 45 through 48 are rational expressions, and we are simplifying them. And we have to divide, multiply, add, subtract. Um, multiplying and dividing are easier. You just need to factor everything in order to simplify these expressions. I'm going to try and just do these right close by the original problem. So the z squared minus 9 factors into z plus 3 and z minus 3. Sorry, my pen's getting a little silly there. And the trinomial above here, the two numbers whose product are a positive 9 are 3 and 3. But those two numbers need to add to be a negative 6. So I, used to I need to use a negative 3 and a negative 3. I'm going to recopy all this now because this is a division problem. And when you divide, you have to multiply by the reciprocal of the seven, second fraction. The 5 over the z plus 3 is good to go. But the second fraction had the difference of squares in the denominator. I'm going to move that upstairs. That's a z plus 3. There we go. The numerator was z squared minus 6z plus 9, and when I factored that, that became z minus 3 and z minus 3. I'm now ready to remove the common factors on the top and on the bottom. So the z plus 3's, one on the top, one on the bottom, can be removed, and so can the z minus 3's, one on the uh, you know what? Now I get what's going on. Okay, I'm going to try to bring this back. I think it's the pen color that I'm using. Um, Z minus 3's can be removed top and bottom. And now I just write my answer as what's remaining in this problem. And actually I'm going to write it over here so I have room for number the next problem. The 5 in the numerator over the Z minus 3 in the denominator. I'd like to go back to one last thing, however. Um, because I can never divide by zero, I do have some restrictions on my domain. And this denominator of z plus 3 would uh, cause me to not ever be allowed to use a negative 3 in this problem. And this denominator right there that has a z minus 3 in it would uh, cause me to never be allowed to use a positive 3. So those two are the restrictions on my domain for this problem. The answer is the 5 over z minus 3, but I, if I asked you to list the restrictions, negative 3 and 3 would be those two things. And number 46, just a multiplication problem, easier than the one to the left, number 45. The x squared minus 25 gets factored into x plus 5 and x minus 5. The denominator, the x squared minus the 10x plus the 25 is a perfect square trinomial again. And it's just got a 1 in front of the x squared term, so I know there needs to be x's in the front of each of the binomials. And I need two numbers whose product is a positive 25, and they add to be a negative 10. That would be a negative 5 and a negative 5. Their product is a positive 25, and they do add to be a negative 10. On the far right over here, I have x minus 5, and it can't be factored, so I'll just put it in parentheses. And I have an x plus 5. Again, it can't be factored, so I'll just put it in parentheses. And now I should remove my greatest common, uh, I'm sorry, I should remove my common factors, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom. So I happen to notice those two right there. When I remove them, please know that that means they are equal to 1. You've just crossed off something and it's, and it's equal to 1. So this x plus 5 and this x plus 5, that's also equal to 1. And it happens that I'm going to cross off an x minus 5 and an x minus 5 here, and they're equal to 1. And lo and behold, in this problem, um, everything reduced, but they were all the same thing over the same thing. So my answer to this problem is 1. The only thing that you need to again remember um, this denominator was x plus 5 so the restriction on the domain was a negative 5 and then this x minus 5 right here the restriction on its domain on the domain I'm sorry would be a positive 5 when you add and subtract algebraic fractions you have to have a common denominator 
Number 47, um, the denominators are already alike. So uh, when you add fractions, let's just do a little fraction problem down here. 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths is equal to 5 over 7 because you add those numerators and you keep that common denominator. So in this problem, because the denominators are already alike, you add the 4x and the 5x and you get 9x. And then you add, combine the minus 1 and the minus 3 to be a minus 4. Um, and that's your numerator over the common denominator. When you're done, if anything was factorable, you should do that in case you can simplify it. But that's not the case in this problem. So in number 48, you've got to have a common denominator. You've got to get one. And to do that, you have to factor the denominators. So the trinomial in the first fraction needs to be factored. And there's an x in the front of each of the binomials. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to be a negative 10. Well, those are going to be a negative 10 and a positive 1. They do multiply to be a negative 10. They also add to be the negative 9. The second fraction, the 6 over the x minus 10, the denominator can't be factored. So x minus 10 is, is the denominator. And so the least common denominator for these two fractions is both of those binomials. It's the x minus 10, which occurs in both of them. But the x plus 1 has got to be in the common denominator as I go to finish this problem. I'm going to copy over the first fraction. So I've got 7x minus 4 over the common denominator of x minus 10 and x plus 1. I'm not allowed to subtract these because this denominator is missing an x plus 1. So what I need to do is I need to multiply um, top and bottom of this fraction by x plus 1 so that this fraction has the correct LCD. But what you need to do is this 6 needs to be distributed times the x and get a 6x. And that 1 has to, uh, the 6 has to be multiplied by the 1. But I'm going to advocate, since the 6 is a monomial, I'm going to advocate, because this is a subtraction problem, adding the opposite. And now I'm going to distribute a negative 6 times x and get a minus 6x right here. And then I'm going to distribute a negative 6 times 1, so I get the minus 6. In order to co concentrate on the numerators, I'm just going to write down that I have an LCD in that fraction. And the first fraction is the 7x minus 4, and it already had the LCD too. Because that 6 became a negative 6 and I changed this into an addition problem, I'm now able to combine my like terms. So 7x minus 6x is 1x. And this minus 4 right below the star and that minus 6 combines to be a minus 10. And now I have to put the common denominator down below here to, in order to finish this problem. And lo and behold, this problem can now be simplified because this x minus 10 can't be factored. It can just be thought of as 1 times the x minus 10. With the x minus 10 that's in the denominator, these can be reduced. And so my answer to this problem is a 1 in the numerator and an x plus 1 in the denominator. And there's my answer. Please don't try to cross off those 1s. Um, it's, uh, it's only common factors that can be removed. And the denominator is a binomial. That's all one thing. And so you can't re remove those 1s. Number 49 is a, still a rational expression, and it's a subtraction problem, so I have to have a common denominator. Um, in order to get a common denominator, if any of the denominators are factorable, you must do that. So the two numbers whose product is this 21 right here are 7 times 3, and they add to be the 10. I'm going to erase those in a minute. So the 7 and the 3, these are easy trinomials to factor. Um, because you just need to look for those two numbers that multiply to be 21 and add to be 10. And then the second denominator 
is just the binomial x plus 7. So my LCD has to be every factor that's involved. That's the x plus 7 and the x plus 3. So the first fraction, x squared minus 7 over the x plus 7 and the x plus 3 is good to go. It's got the least common denominator. But the second fraction, the x minus 4 over the x plus 7 is not. It needs the x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply that top and bottom by the x plus 3. But this one's different than the last problem in that the last problem had a 6 in the numerator. This problem's got an x minus 4 in the numerator. And um, before you go crossing off these x minus 3s, which is a common mistake and kind of a silly one, I hope you're laughing at that, you just put them there, you don't want to cross them off. What you have to do now is you have to FOIL these two right here. You have to find out what the numerator is equal to, and then we're going to come and apply this minus sign after the fact. So let's first FOIL. So I'm going to do most of it in my head. Um, the x times x is x squared. Then I have a 3x minus a 4x, which is a minus 1x in the middle. And the minus 4 times the 3 is a minus 12. And I'm going to concentrate on the fact that I have the common denominator now for both of these. And I'm just going to pay attention to the fact that I have to subtract them now. When you subtract polynomials, when you take that x squared minus the 7 and subtract the numerator, the x squared minus x minus the 12, it's as though I'm asking you to multiply everything in that numerator by a negative 1 and make that become a negative x squared and a positive x and a positive 12. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to go ahead and just swipe this and make this a negative x squared, a positive x, and a positive 12. And now I'm going to combine my like terms. Well, this x squared right here and that minus x squared right there disappear. So I'm going to come over to the right and put the positive x, which is the only x term, and then this minus 7 and this positive 12 adds to be 5, I believe. And my common denominator is x plus 7 and x plus 3. And I'm all done because the x plus 5 is not a common binomial to anything in the denominator. I didn't need to put those parentheses around, but um, I did it so that you could see that there's no reducing that can be done. This problem is finished. Again, don't forget about the restrictions on the domain. Um, we're going to move into solving equations next. I'm going to erase this in a minute, but what I want you to see between uh, this next few problems, I'm looking to see how many there are, just a couple, 50 and 51, versus 49, 48, 47, is that there's an equal sign here. And the directions say solve this equation. So I want to find out that x equals some number. That's, that's my goal. So when you see these problems, please recognize that you are trying to look for what x equals. You still have to get a least common denominator. And so, I'm going to erase that. And so, in this problem, the LCD is the number 15. Many people think that they need to get common denominators in this problem in order to work it. To be able to see this well, um, what I want you to recognize is that the goal is to get rid of the denominators, not to get common denominators. So we multiply both sides of this equation by the full number 15. And this pen's a little thick. I'm going to rewrite this again. So that means that the x plus 2 over the 3 gets multiplied by the 15. That means that the x over 5 gets multiplied by the whole number 15. And that means that the 4 fifths on the right side gets multiplied by a 15. And the reason you do that is because all of these denominators will divide into 15 easily. For example, 3 goes into there once and it goes into 15 five times. So you're going to take that 5 times the x plus 2. And you will not have a denominator there. It's a denominator of 1. 
a 5 goes into here once and goes into there three times, so you'll have 3 times the x. And a 5 goes into here once and into here three times, so you'll have 3 times 4 when you write your next step. So again, right here, I'm left with 5 times x plus 2. In the next term, I had a 3 when I reduced those times the x. And on the right-hand side of this equation, I had this 4 times 3, which is 12. And now I just got to use my algebra skills. I got to distribute here. I've got to collect my like terms on the left-hand side of this equation. That's the 3x and the 5x adds to be 8x. Now I've got to subtract 10 from both sides of this equation. I'm going to bring this over here. So I have 8x plus 10 equals 12. And then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides of the problem. And I have 8x equals 2. And then I will divide both sides by 8. So 2 divided by 8, and I should reduce that, is equal to 1 quarter. And um, I really should check my solution. I'm not going to take the time to do that. And there are no limitations on my domain for this problem. I'm going to store this, save this, um, this clip, and then do number 51 next. Number 51, the denominators don't need to be factored in order to find the least common denominator, but just remember that the LCD is the variable factors the greatest number of times they occur in any one denominator. So not only do I have to include the 3 in the LCD, but I have to include x squared because x occurs um, x times x in that denominator. And so that's the greatest number of times it occurs in any denominator. Here it's only once. So what I'm doing is I'm taking each term, the 3 over x and the 1 over 3 and the 12 over x squared, and I'm going to multiply each of those by the full LCD, the 3x squared. And then I'm going to cross off the portion of the denominator that I can. So for example here, x to the second and x to the first gives me just x in the numerator because I subtract the exponents. Or you could say x squared is x times x, and I'm going to remove that one and that one. That means I'm left with this 3 times this 3, which is 9, and just an x that x right there. These threes cancel out and I'm left with a 1x squared. You do not need to write that 1. Typically I won't write that 1. And then finally on the right hand side the x squareds will cancel out and 12 times 3 is 36. Well the only way I know to solve a problem that's got an x squared in it is to, right now anyway, is by the zero product rule and factoring. So I've got to get this 36 over the left hand side so I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. While I'm at it, I'm going to put the x squared term in front then the 9x, then the minus 36, and so it's in descending order, and then the 0. And now I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a negative 36. So one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. The two numbers have to add together to be a positive 9, so I'm going to try a positive 12 and a minus 3. They multiply to be a negative 36, and they add to be 9. And then the zero product rule says to set those factors equal to 0. So set the x plus 12 equal to 0, and set the x minus 3 equal to 0, and then go ahead and solve for x by subtracting 12 from both sides. So there's one of my answers. Adding 3 to both sides, and my other answer is x equals 3, and often we will write the fact that we have two solutions in um, a brace. This just shows us what the two answers are. The only restriction on my domain over here was 0 because I can't divide by 0, so those two answers, answers will likely check, and I have checked them, and they do.